The other day, a YouTuber named Shada Campbell posted a video called Art Projects to Try When You're Bored at Home, and I loved them. They were all so up my alley. I found them so inspirational. I love her artwork, so make sure you go check her out. She's a great teacher. And today we're gonna to be trying Shada Campbell's Bored at Home Art Projects together. The first project is a fun little horizon line. We're using some washi tape. I'm using Prismacolor markers, but really you can use anything that you can use to color with, honestly. Um, and then I tried out my color palette and did a little first draft on some scratch paper before I started. My spacing is three by five inches and my larger paper is nine by 12 if you wanted my sizing. I did have some bleeding with mine, but I like ripped my washi tape up and down, up and down a couple of times I was being a perfectionist, so, but it still looks really good, I love it. So I am just drawing some mountainous horizon lines in this like rusty color and a little tip. Mine is sped up, obviously, but a tip for using markers is to go nice and slow. That actually makes it so the marker can really saturate the paper and you'll have less marker lines. And then when we get to the top of the horizon line, we're just gonna draw a sun with some sun rays bursting out. Okay, the rays were a little bit of a challenge for me, but my tip is to, when you move on to the next ray, draw that first line where there's already a ray adjacent to it. That'll help you keep things parallel and have good spacing. And then also at the base of the sun ray, keep those really, really thin. So next, Shada added some line art on top of her uh, landscape and I'm gonna do the same. She used white, I'm using white too. Like Shady used a white pen, so I'm gonna use a white pen. With the white, I just tried to maintain balance and add some visual interest and um, a little bit more contrast between those color breaks in my color palette along the horizon line. So I just really did thicker lines kind of surrounding the mountains and then a couple of thinner lines at the base and at the top. And then I did some dashed lines and I didn't like it, so I just covered them right up. Isn't that great? When you peel your washi tape off, it is done. Like Shada said, the thick border makes it look so sophisticated. I love that. I have never tried just blocking off a certain area on the paper and working with that. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I am definitely doing it again in the future. So thanks for the new technique, Shada. The next project is really fun because it forces you out of your comfort zone and helps you get creative and find new shapes. So here's my little rough draft and I wanted you guys to get a good look at it because during my rough draft, I found some shapes that I really liked. So like Shada, I wanted to do flowers. I have always loved flowers. I love drawing flowers. When I saw Shada's project, which was to draw some abstract blobs in, she used marker. You can use really like any medium that an ink pen or some other medium will draw on top of to do this project. And you just make abstract um, kind of color blobs on your paper and then you go in and you illustrate on top of them and you can do anything You don't have to turn it into flowers but this was such a fun way to find new shapes with flowers and I loved this project so much, but when I did my rough draft, I was like, okay Well, here are a few new leaf shapes that I like and here's a new flower shape that I like So I know what I'm doing for my official project and then I also didn't like the color palette, so I completely scrapped it and just winged it and made up a new color palette and went with that. So once you get all your color blobs down, you can illustrate on top of it. And basically the, the idea here is you just find shapes that kind of fit your color blob. It's so fun. I had so much fun with this project. I'm so glad that Shada recommended it. And like I said, she used markers in her video. Um, I decided to use watercolors. You could do anything. And what's really great about this is it just forces you to see things differently. And especially if you love to draw flowers or anything in nature, 
The thing about flowers is they are very imperfect. From far away, they look like these perfect, gorgeous little specimens, right? Specimen, but they, they, when you get up close, they're jagged and they are imperfect. And so are watercolors. And so are random blobs on a paper. And so when you have to force your mind to make a shape around a little blob, you you get outside of your shape bank. So within your mind, you already have your idea of what these things look like, but when, but an abstract bubble shape of color makes you, it allows you to see things differently and come up with new shapes. So I love that. So yeah, you just illustrate on top, whatever you want, doesn't have to be flowers and you're good to go. Okay, and this is a total Shada shout out because this is something that I love that she does with her illustrations. You'll be watching her channel and just when you think it can't get any cuter, she adds these teeny tiny little botanical berries or leaves that just take it up to the next level. So I did that today on this illustration in her honor. Aren't they so cute? I love this project. I'm so glad that I did it. And I will definitely be trying it again in the future to get outside of my box and learn new shapes. Okay, I know I keep saying it, but I love all these projects. <laughs> when I saw this project in Shada's video, I was so, so excited. I'm using a lot of different kind of marker mediums here and ink mediums, whites, black, brush uh, nibs, extra fine nibs because we are going abstract so if you have watched my channel much at all then you know that i love a geometric print okay i always revert back to the geometric print and i have never thought of just layering markers on a piece of paper to make a geometric print for this project i really tried to go with balance of course as always i recommend getting your color palette taken care of before you start. You always wanna to commit to your color palette before you start. It really is gonna help you get better results. Color theory for the win. Actually, that's something that Shada recommends as well. So 10 out of 10 would recommend. But for this one, when I'm laying down the big color blocks, I'm really going for balance. I want lightness and darkness spread out. I don't want any area to feel too heavy. And then, so I want balance in shade as in light or dark, as well as with color, and then also with shapes, honestly. So that's what I went off of. That was the vibe that I was going for. A couple of things about my thought process while making this. I wish that I had gone in with like a story or a feeling. I think that would have made it easier. It's funny because you think that abstract artwork is going to be super easy because there aren't any rules and you can do anything you want, but that's what makes it hard. Like that level of freedom, you're like, ugh. And also the human mind, it wants to make good shapes for you. The human mind, it sees shapes, it creates shapes for you. I know that sounds really weird, but it really does happen. So when you're doing abstract artwork, you want shapes. Your human mind wants to make shapes. So it's actually a challenge. It's a, it's a fun challenge, definitely worth giving a try. And um, I think some fun things to do would be like do five minute timer runs, set five minute timers and just bust out a bunch of abstract art or go in with a certain emotion or a certain story in mind and say, okay, I'm gonna tell an abstract story of sadness, I'm gonna tell an abstract love story or uh, a story of peace and harmony, you know what I'm saying? That would be cool, that would be cool. So this was fun, you get to play with lines and shapes and spacing and I think that this is a really good Exercise just kind of for getting back to basics, you know, like how many how many different ways can I draw a line? How much interest, how much visual interest can I make out of a line? <laughs> Now 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found some inspiration or thought that it was cool. I hope you enjoyed my take on Shada's projects. Even though we only did three together today, Shada did five projects in her video and I will be linking that everywhere possible. If you haven't already checked out her channel, definitely do, especially if you like watercolors and flowers. She's a great teacher and she has really fun projects and her channel is just absolutely stunning. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye.